Hello boys and girls. I always say boys and girls, I don't say ladies and gents because I say we should all be childlike. I'm here with the wonderful Presh, he's my play buddy and we, um, we often do our lives on a Monday night and we happen to be here doing some promotional work and I've been face to face deliberating a long time on the subject that we, I've mentioned, suicide. The reason being is because I've talked many times about us all being ions, electrons, neutrons, atoms, all vibrating at a certain frequency. And we want to vibrate ultimately at a higher frequency so we can achieve more, get more stuff done. And if you vibrate at a lower frequency, you don't, life becomes a bit more crap. You don't want to get out of bed in the morning. And so the subject I'm going to talk about is very dear to my heart. And obviously somebody, unfortunately, Caroline Flack, and it's very sad. I don't know her. I never knew her. I understand what went on. I don't actually. I don't understand what went on for her to do what she did, but it's extremely sad. And I generally don't think somebody who had all that wealth of exciting gifts in her life should be doing something like that. And it makes you wonder what's going on. I myself have been there many, many times, and. It's actually quite normal in life's trials and tribulations to feel like ending it all. It's it's, I, it's I more normal people, than it's more, more normal than people give credit for. A lot of people are still stuck with that taboo that you can't talk about it. A lot of people do still feel like that. We did a topic recently: <laughs> grown men don't cry, million percent. or do they? And, but that's what I was going to say. I'm, I'm still deliberated because. Do I talk about it? Because by talking about it, it lowers your vibration. And, and we, we had a conversation earlier. I'm concentrating all this stuff here. I've, I've had four very close dear friends around Enough. the same age commit suicide. Um, PTSD. I, I've been diagnosed with PTSD. You've been in the military. I purposely no. not, it wasn't from the military, it's from other things. I purposely not talked about it because it draws me down an area which makes me feel more depressed. And, but I think it's important to talk. So, as a therapist, and I know the answer, I'm asking you, for the, the viewers at home, right, you've got these problems, but you don't want to address them. So you just let, put them under the carpet. And guess what, all right, life's happy, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Well, we have to address them. We've got to address them, but there are, two, there are two things. There are two mistakes or two things that happen that people unfortunately end up doing. The first is, once they muster the courage, if somebody does actually muster the courage to speak about it, and that's the first step, to muster the courage to want to speak about it, they sometimes, unfortunately, speak to somebody who is not the best person to speak to. They speak about it in the wrong circles or in the wrong way. The second thing is, yes. when they speak about it, it's one thing speaking about it for therapeutic purposes. And it's another thing wallowing in it, right? So it's one thing discussing the past. It's another thing because. living in the past, right? And so as a therapist, we wanna have somebody be able to open up and speak about that situation or that feeling without feeling like they have to wallow in it. And that's not an easy thing, but that's what we need to start to encourage people to do, to start to open up and but understandably, from someone who's just literally gone through this just last week, I felt such misery. And for me to get to the other side, I had to crawl, to get out the, the muddy yeah. tunnel, I had to crawl through shitty, dirty water, metaphorically speaking. So I knew that. But the thing is, I could see the light. So that was the, that was the saving grace to get me to crawl through the Jeez. horrible emotions. Unfortunately... I, you can't not, not go through horrible no. emotions. We live, we're, we're human beings. Yeah. Life and, can be tough. And we, can't, and we can't deny it. I think the other challenge that a lot of people have is when they want to discuss something, they bring everything up at the same time. So from a therapeutic, from a coaching or a counseling perspective, it doesn't help if you, if you as a client go there and start opening up about everything. And that's another challenge. See, the challenge is that sometimes people look at their life and they macrofy, that is, they look at everything that's going wrong. It's overwhelming. And it's overwhelming. 
instead of saying, well, hang on, everything isn't wrong. Is it really everything is bad? And invariably, everything mm. isn't bad. But what we do is we tend to generalize, we, we extrapolate. Yeah. And when we do have multiple issues, rather than attacking or addressing each issue in its own merit, we try and bundle them all up. And we say, I've got all of these problems that I've got to deal with. I've got an addiction. I've got suicidal tendencies. Yeah. I've also got abusive patterns in my past. I've got a negative personal personality disorder as well. I also suffer from depression. And suddenly you've got these four or five things stacked together and you just, it's too overwhelming. You can't slay the beast, Alex. And you know, you've obviously had people close. Just, just last week, and it, it pains me to say this, but let's be real, I felt suicidal. I'm not going to do that because my belief structure, but for, a, for a, about 20 minutes, I felt, I just don't want to do this anymore. I just want to get out of here. And I, but then I realized. What, what, what was the predominating feeling in those 20 minutes? Was it overwhelmed? Overwhelmed. Was it overwhelmed. And it was, I couldn't see the wood for the trees. My, this is my vision. And it came to this one problem of like, all of the, it was so much pressure. Right. I couldn't, all I could see was this problem. And you forget, and, is, and isn't it funny that when that happens, you sometimes forget the things that are precious in your oh, life at that moment, right? Yeah, I, so your beautiful fiance, uh, exactly. uh, some yeah. dear family member, yeah. uh, or somebody who you care about, we know yeah. who we're talking about here, yeah. who's not got long left on this earth. Yeah. And people who we care about, things that we care about, things that we want to achieve, those precious things suddenly go out of our head because our vision has gone right here and we're just totally overwhelmed by what's in front of so us. So do you know what I did? Just a bit of self-help, um, if I can help anyone, for myself, literally just today, I was talking to someone out of suicide. This is so crazy. Right, today, and, this is what you and he's, about. And he's got, he's got uh, lots of good stuff going on in his life. And I'm like, the number one thing is, it's hard if you, if you haven't got this, but to realize if you don't love yourself, and this guy didn't love himself, then nobody's gonna love you. You can't. Once you, once you realize you've got, a, if you can love yourself, it was the one thing that made me feel, hang on, actually we, you've achieved this, this, and this. So it's not, and you, you start looking, rather than looking here, you start looking, there's a little bit over there. And someone just smiled at me hmm. on the street. Someone gave me an act of kindness. You know, it's just something. Something little as that. And you and appreciate it one push, thing. And that's, it can just push you out of that state. And, and you're in that state. And, and. For me, guess what? I believe in karma so much for the law of attraction. If you vibrate at a certain frequency, you attract that. We all know about the secret. There's a lot more to it. For so sure. if I start being nice to people, um, being kind, just smiling at someone and being a bit happy and looking, smile at someone with your eyes, just with, you know, in a nice way. Guess what? It comes back. It and then when it fun. comes back, that is the most wonderful power to stop you feeling lack of self-worth you know community is community and you know if you're having difficulty doing this if you feel you can't can i suggest a simple analogy all of us have had the experience of a child who has who we've held in our arms it may be our own child it might be somebody else's child but i think we've all had this experience of having a baby in our arms or close to us, and the baby's smiling up at us. There's this moment when oh, the baby I'm just smiling smiles up, right? About it. Right? It's lovely. And then, or you're sitting on a train, a crowded train, and, and the mother with the baby opposite you, she looks at you, and the baby kind of smiles at you. And, and there's no reason, you, there's just no reason or exact explanations for why the child's smiling, but this smile, the child is giving you this smile, this look. It's that innocent look. There's no reason for it. It's that innocent look that captures you. And so, we're not incapable of doing that. We just forget because we're, as adults, we've just been programmed by so much negativity. We face so much and we forget, but it's not that we're not capable. So to bring back that childlikeness, that childlikeness, that baby likeness just happy. in ourselves, to be happy, I think what Sorry. you're saying is so profound. We're just going, Even when we're feeling down, if we can smile at somebody. I just get this, I've got a, we just rescued a Chihuahua. She's 22 months, she's had the most horrific life and the first day I got her she bit me and I was like little bitch but 
I, I wanted to give her a bit of love. And I remember that day. she was so, you know, had so much pain and misery. And just, it was a bit patient. And you just gave her, you smiled and, her with love. And smiled her with love. And the next day I loved her so much. But long story short, whatever's happened to her, she, she could have to, you could treat her horribly. And I have to tell her off sometimes because she's a bit naughty. But she still, every single time I come in, she wags her tails and happy to see me. That's that. What can you learn from a puppy dog? That love, so forgiving. So I forgiving. see the sadness in her eyes, what's happened to her. Right, but and I know. Still. And it, but still, so much love. Amazing. And that makes me, feel, that's so changed me, just the love of that puppy dog. It's crazy. I, you know, it reminds me of that song. You've just got me on this song by Lionel Richie. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's just come to me and I feel it from my heart, you know. It's an old song from Lionel Richie yes. from his Can't Slow Down album. It's the album where he did Hello. And I'm sorry, but I gotta share it with you because it captures what you're saying. Hello. He goes, uh, on that album, he's got a song called Love Will Find A Way. And he goes, I see the tears you cry. I see the pain that's in your eyes. But if you know where you're going, there's nothing you can do. Listen, because troubles will come and they will leave you your people will try to deceive you but if you can know your heart and your way something like that anyway the point is that he's he, a song like that reminds us that it's okay that we may have tears it's okay that we may cry it's okay that we may feel that we've lost We've lost so many battles, we've lost so many wars, we've lost our money, we've lost the relationship of our life and we screwed up 1500 times. We all have, it's okay, it's not okay to admit defeat and say it's over. That's what we're trying to do and I think going back to innocence, as you say, you know, through the innocence of a child or the innocence of a pet, going back to that innocent state, that is within our grasp. And you know what? It's conversations like this that help one million to percent. that seed, right? One, and, and as Press said, it, it, it was overwhelming, everything, all of these pressures and strains, and you can't cope, I just want to get out of it. If you could just see one little moment of, of pleasure, of, of beauty, of happiness in like a, a puppy dog smiling, a baby smiling, a beautiful rose, and you can see the, the energy and the, it just, it's just gonna say, hang on, let's, Life isn't, all you've got is now. What I'm talking about is meditation. Yeah. When you meditate, awareness as well, this right? is what we're talking about, about our retreats. Um, awareness, with, meditation, yeah. and we'll share this. Yeah. You know, it, it's the most can. powerful thing and we should learn at school. We don't learn it. We well, don't teach that 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 school. And folks, look, you know, let's be real clear. We're not minimizing or in any way detracting from those viewers who have people who are clinically depressed, who have chronic depression, or who may be suicidal and clinically diagnosed as being suicidal. We're not minimizing that. We're not yeah. pretending to be professionals that can treat that. Obviously, seek professional advice. But what we are trying to do is, I think, speak from our heart. You've had that feeling multiple times. You've lost friends with it. I've had family members who have suffered from chronic depression for years. I felt like taking my own life a number of times. Yeah. And you know what? Strangely, one of the things that stopped me was like you. I thought about, you know, I thought about there are things that I want to achieve. And in one sense, it was almost a feeling of guilt that stopped me. I thought, well, if I take my own life now, who's going to look after my younger brother? Who's going to fend for the family? My old man was old. My brother was young. And I just thought, well, that's kind of selfish. If I take my own life, I mean, yeah, fine. I just got divorced and my life is over. And my ex just took everything that belonged to me and I felt shit. But if I give up now, who's going to look after them? And so sometimes we have to find whatever it takes to pull us from that tendency. And if it's not the smile of a child, if it's not the love of a puppy, then let it be the guilt that you would feel of leaving somebody behind. Because guaranteed there is someone or something that you would be giving up that is far too precious. And what causes that guilt? Cause of that? What causes that guilt? It's a consciousness. It's ah, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> what is it? I know what it is. It's a four letter word. It's L O V E. V -E. It's so it just comes back to love. Right? It's, it's love. Yeah. It's love. Yeah, you love, you're, you love the, the guilt is coming from the love. The guilt is coming from the love. And, and I think in summation, you know, mindful of time, I think 
you also, I love what you say sometimes when you, when we speak, you sometimes talk about it, right? You talk about self-love, right? But is, do you remember in Hungary, we talked about tough love on our retreat? Yeah. So is it not a case, and maybe this is something for you guys to just think about, maybe contemplate like we've done, that sometimes life needs to be a balance of self-love and tough love. We actually need both. Tough love and self-love are needed. And tough love can help us and self-love can help us. And if we can kind of start to embrace those two aspects into our daily lives, whether it's in our physical activity, whether it's in our work, putting more passion into our work, whether it's in our relationships that may be dead or dying, or the people that we can't forgive because we're too damn proud to forgive, or we, that we've been hurt too much. But if we can find ourselves, find in our heart the ability to find that self-love, and then also apply a bit of tough love to ourselves before somebody else applies it to us, then we are finding the route back to our better self, our more empowered self. We've given ourselves coping mechanisms. We're expanding our ability to deal with these stresses. That's the tough love. Um, yeah, amen. And self-love we've talked about. And being present in the now. And folks, we'll do that in a bit, under six weeks. We'll be doing a lot of this work and a lot of this deep stuff that we're talking about. We'd love to invite you. We're gonna be doing this on our retreat. It, what it does, like I said, like just last week, I had a suicidal thought. I'm never going to do that. I don't want to get it out no. there. I mean, it would be the best uh, coach if I was going to do that. Um, but what I, my, the reason for me sharing that is I want you to, I want people to understand it's, it's very normal. It's not, it's not healthy by any means, but I'm never going to do it because I have all these coping mechanisms. But it's quite normal in society to yeah, feel let's not overwhelmed. Up about it. Uh, yeah, and I'm like, okay, so yeah, for a millisecond, maybe a few minutes, I'm like, well, okay, I've had enough of this, I don't want to do it all, this, this is crap. Well, Rick, come on, I did what we did here. I was, the, the world all narrowed down into a laser beam of pressure, and I expanded it, and I thought, oh, God, a second, it's not so bad. And those, those feelings and emotions went away. And here you are still saying, you know, it takes courage to say that. I've had it twice, and it took courage for me to come out of it. So I think let's leave you with this. I'd love to invite Alex, if it's all right with you, I'd love to invite all of you to share. If you felt this way, and if you feel bold enough to share it in this non-judgmental space, when you have felt like taking your own life, share it. Share why. In a summary, you don't have to be, you don't have to break your confidentiality, but if you feel like sharing why you felt that way, share it because Alex is so right. We need to become more transparent the more people dialogue. understand it's actually up. so normal it's okay and we it, need to it's normalize gonna, this narrative it, it's it's we don't want that to happen oh we don't talk about that it's, it's, no, shut, don't. But i've been shut up by people so many times so by many when times. i'm saying i felt like ended it all yeah, don't just, talk like that yeah Stop. it's just like the people who say when you're depressed right somebody you know somebody's depressed and they say oh, sorry get over it it's just you don't need to be depressed you can't tell somebody yeah. who's clinically depressed yeah. or who's genuinely depressed i'll oh, get over it you'll be fine People make you feel shit for being this way, but you shouldn't have to. It should be normalized. Yeah. And guess what? Uh, knowing soldiers who and tough guys and losing four friends, you would never, ever think that they were depressed right. or had any problems. They were all smiles and happy. But they're not, they, they, they didn't feel that they could speak about it. One million percent. They, well, <laughs> yeah. Right? One of them did. And I thought he was, he was never going to do it. I thought he was crying wolf. Danny, I've had some guilt for that. So, but at the same time, that's another subject. That's why to. we need to be able to. But let's talk it about it more. Talk and about it. Share, share your comments. And share the love. Share the love if, if, and your solutions. Right. Yeah, so, just, if you felt like, if you felt suicidal in your life, share, share here. Feel free to do let's so. Let's raise vibration and, and and share why you didn't go through with it. What stopped you? Because you may not realize that the reason that you put for what stopped you from taking your own life might be the inspiration to stop somebody else from doing so. Amen. Namaste. Hallelujah. Folks, we would love to continue this dialogue. And you know what? We would love to welcome a group of like-minded people to take this conversation offline and really do some deep work. We're going to be doing it from the 27th to the 29th. You've heard us go on about yeah. it. And you know what? We are passionate about doing this because this is the kind of stuff that's needed. It's those close trusting spaces that we create 
then we need those spaces. So check out the links. We won't go on about it here. But the links are there, 27th to 29th of March in Harlow, Essex. We'll look after you for the whole weekend and you might just come out a transformed human being, even more so than you already are. I'm gonna see a load of boys and girls. Peace out.